How's it going, Dave here? And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what to play in between your chords and your chord progressions. So let's get straight into it. So today's chord progression is going to be in the key of D major, and we are playing a three, six, two, five, one. So we're playing F sharp minor seven. We've got an interesting voice in here. It's nine on the A, seven on the D, nine on the G, and 10 on the B. Then we're playing B minor seven. Then we're playing E minor seven, which it, we're using the same voicing as the F sharp minor seven. And then we're playing A seven or A dominant seven. And then finishing on a D major seven. So the first and most obvious thing we can add in between those chords is scale runs. So we're gonna be using the D major pentatonic scale. So between F sharp minor seven and B minor seven, I could maybe add something like this from the D major pentatonic scale. And then between B minor and E minor, I could do that. Then between E minor and A seven, I could do. between A7 and D major 7, I could do. There we go. All right, so all together we've got. Okay, cool, so no fancy patterns there. We're just running down the scale, quite simple. Now what we could add to that is double stops. So we could play the same exact licks but just add an extra note to them so i'm just taking the note on the string above and adding that to each scale run between f sharp minor seven and b minor seven we had that i'm playing those double stops there so just the note on the string above okay b minor seven to e minor seven and it sounds quite cool if you palm mute them as well then e minor seven to a seven and then A7 to D7, uh, to D major seven. So all together. We've got scale runs and we've got double stops. Now we can add some more interesting things in between our chords. So the next thing is chromaticism. And there are two ways we can apply chromaticism to our fills in between chords. So first of all, we can just play a little lead lines in between chords. So for example, between this F sharp minus seven and the B minus seven, I could play this. So I'm just playing 10, nine, eight, seven on the B string. And that sounds really nice, okay? So that's a very simple way of adding chromaticism into your uh, fills. So the note that makes uh, that particular phrase sound chromatic is this note here. The ninth fret on the B string, it's a G sharp, and it's actually the sharp fourth of your key. So if you can play that sharp fourth, uh, in between some notes that are diatonic to the key, then uh, you get a really nice sound there, okay? So that's one way we can apply chromaticism. The other way we can apply chromaticism is in a line cliche. So a line cliche is when we play a chord, but then we change one of the notes and we either ascend it or descend it chromatically. So that could either be the root, the fifth, or the seventh, uh, it typically doesn't work with the third, but you can experiment and see if it works for you. A classic example would be Stairway to Heaven, where the, the note in the bass uh, gradually descends in semitones. So let me show you what an interesting line cliche might sound like. So we could play an A minor. We could play A minor with G sharp in the bass. A minor with G in the bass. A minor with F sharp in the bass. And that leads nicely into an F chord. Or we could maybe play a C chord and ascend the fifth in semitone. So we've got fifth, uh, which is the G string, and 
and ascend it by one fret at a time. So the first fret, and the second fret, and the third fret. And that leads nicely into F. Okay, so that's an interesting thing you can do. So let's add one to our chord progression. So between B minor seven and E minor seven, we're gonna add the line cliche. So B minor seven, I'm gonna ascend the root at a semitone at a time, with the exception of the first time, I'm gonna skip C and go straight to C sharp. So B, C, sharp, D, B sharp, into our E minor seven. So let's hear that one more time. Sounds very, very cool. And finally, something we could add into our chord progressions in the fills in between chords is passing chords. Now I've done a video on passing chords you can check out, 10 different types of passing chords. So there's gonna be loads of inspiration in that video. So definitely check that out uh, once you've checked this video out. But let me give you a few examples of passing chords we could use right now. So, so F sharp minor to B minor. We could play a C7 in between there, so. Now, why does that work? That is called a tritone substitution. I'm not gonna go into the theory because I've done videos on tritone substitutions where I explain the theory in detail and you'll get a greater understanding from watching that. So definitely check that out. But what we're doing is we're playing a dominant seventh chord, one semitone higher than the chord that we're playing next. So from F sharp minor, the next chord is B minor seven. Uh, so one semitone above B minor seven is C. Uh, so we're going to play a C7, dominant 7 there. Okay, and you can do that with most chords and it sounds quite cool. So then between B minor 7 and E minor 7, what can we do there? We could play this. So what have I done there? So I've played a B minor 7 to a B dominant 7 and then played the E minor 7. So basically, the B minor 7 uh, the B is a fifth higher than an, than the E. So the, the root of the B minor seven chord is a fifth higher than the root of the E minor seven chord. And when a chord is a fifth higher, then we can turn it into a dominant chord and it has like a five to one uh, relationship that you would see in a major key. So it leads very nicely into that E seven, into that E minor seven. So from there, we've got the E minor seven and that leads into A seven. So what have I done here? I played this. So what am I doing? That's a two five passing. So what we're doing is we're imagining the key temporarily changes to whatever the next chord is. So the next chord is A, okay? So we're imagining we're playing in the key of A for a few seconds and we are playing a two five one in the key of A. A two in the key of A would be B minor. So we're playing a B minor seven. The five would be an E7, and then the one, obviously, we're gonna play A7. Okay, so E minor seven, B minor seven, E7, A7, okay. And then from A7 to D major seven, uh, we're gonna play this. Okay, so I'm gonna be here all day if I explain the theory behind that, but what I'm doing is I'm playing diminished seventh chords. So if you don't know how to play a diminished seventh chord, we're playing four on the A, five on the D, three on the G, and five on the B. And this one is one fret below our intended chord that we're going to next. So this is at the fourth fret, so we're playing a C sharp diminished seventh chord. And then we're moving up three frets. Okay, you can do this with diminished seventh chords. Forever. Okay, so we're just doing it once though. And then landing back on our D major seven chord. So if you wanna know why that works, you can check out my video on the dominant seven flat nine chord. It's up there, so definitely check that out. But let's take a look at what the chord progression would sound like with all these passing chords added in. Right, so those are all the things that you can kind of add in between your chords. Uh, now, if we mixed everything together and used 
some scale runs, some scale runs with double stops, we use some chromaticism, and we use some passing chords, maybe our chord progression would sound something like this. <laughs> there you go i hope you enjoyed this video make sure you go and check out the other videos if you're unsure on the theory behind why some of the things work if you're looking to make really really awesome sound and chord progressions i'd highly recommend checking out my book chord charisma which is now on my patreon page at the gold tier membership so definitely check that out if you're not sure if you want to get the book then the first two chapters are available for free uh, down in the description as well and those first two chapters are going to show you how to create a very basic sounding chord progression at first, but then enhance that chord progression with extensions like sixths, sevenths, ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths. That's gonna take a very boring chord progression and turn it into something sounding really sophisticated and jazzy and awesome, great for Neo Soul. Uh, so definitely check it out. Lots of chord shapes in there as well. So uh, I'm not just gonna leave you uh, not knowing what chord shapes to play. So definitely check that out. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.